What I want to talk to you about today is really the reason to have self-discipline, which is to achieve something, some goal that you want. You want to be someone that makes more money than you make right now. You want to be more fit than you are right now, better relationships, more confidence. Like those are all results and self-discipline is really one of the paths to get there. And a lot of that has to do with how you're framing and how you're looking at your goals and the things you want to achieve. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. I want to share something that was really relevant to me and something that I heard, and then we'll talk about how to apply that thing into your whole life. So I was listening to another podcast over the weekend, uh, which is called the Huberman Lab. If you've never listened to it, highly recommend listening to that podcast as well. Um, It is a professor of ophthalmology and epidemiology at Stanford Medical School, um, or maybe biology instead of epidemiology. But in any event, um, it is absolutely amazing and just like dives down into all sorts of the science behind why your body works the way that it works, why your mind works the way that it works. I first watched it because it was an episode about sleep and how to perfect that. And I have since uh, listened to that whole thing because I'm really trying to figure out my sleep. I'll talk about that in an episode later this week. But in this particular episode, I want to talk to you guys about today. There was a really relevant topic. He had a guest on named Emily Besettis, and she's a professor of psychology from New York University. And what she did was she went on this theory about the visualization of a goal and how that related to the person achieving the goal or not achieving the goal. And she had a really interesting case study group that she looked at this about, and it was Olympic runners. So the core idea of her theory was that you had to shift your focus, what you were looking at, like physically looking at in the world, from the macro down to the micro. And she looked at these Olympic runners, like I said, specifically Olympic middle distance runners. So these are people that are running 10Ks, which is about six miles to those of us here in the United States. That's the distance that they were running. Now, they wouldn't visualize the finish line, like the thing that they would actually cross that would have them win a medal or not win a medal, depending on whenever they crossed the finish line. They wouldn't visualize that. Instead, what they would do is they would visualize a series of smaller finish lines. So, for example, they would visualize something they could see. They would visualize a sign or like a sandwich board, like a marker if it was on a track, or they would visualize and look at the shorts of the person in front of them that they were trying to catch, shrinking their focus down from this macro idea of I've got to run 10K and I've got to get to that finish line versus there's a sign right there. I'm going to run as hard as I can to that sign and then I'm going to pick a new target after that or I'm trying to track that runner down. I wanna catch him and pass him. So for right now, I'm just focused on his shorts. Run, 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 till I get those shorts. I'm not worried about the finish line yet, i.e. my big objective. What I'm worried about right now is I'm worried about the thing that's closest to me that I can see. Once they passed that finish line, which is either the sign or the shorts or whatever example that I gave you just now, then they'd simply create a new one. They'd look for the next sign or the next runner that was ahead of the one they just passed and focus on what that finish line looked like. And this, again, just shrunk down this macro thing of having to run a 10K down into these short little mini races. And the mini races helped them visualize the achievement of their goals faster. And as the argument went, it made it more psychologically manageable right? The longer between you and your goal, the more you have to think about. Like think about all the things that could have gone wrong for somebody running a 10K. And if you've ever run a 10K, you know, there's a ton of things that could go wrong. Like the way that you run, you could have a bad step. You could run out of breath. Like you could really, like you can mess with your your heart rate, could go up and down based on your nerves. Like there's a lot of things to think about and a lot of things that could go wrong in even that period of time. Versus the shorter version of it, which is like, I just have to get to that sign. There's a lot less to manage. So it feels less weighty and the weight of these longer goals, it becomes overwhelming. And what usually happens in that case, when the goal is so far out there that you have trouble really visualizing it, let's say this is like a one-year goal, or in some cases you have a five-year goal. If you've got those things, the weight of it becomes so big that either you have poor performance 
because you're like, how is this possibly going to happen? You feel like you're stuck or you just give up altogether. And I think the give up altogether happens way more often than anybody, any other type of thing. People start out full of fire and then they just stop with whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. Now, conversely, if you look at the opposite of that, which is exactly what they were talking about when uh, Dr. Bassettis was was talking about this, is that if you've got a shorter timeline, like there's less weight to it and less can go wrong. So it's easier to manage. Plus, from a biological perspective, you get this boost of dopamine every time you pass a finish line, whatever it is that you looked at, your sign, your pair of shorts, whatever it was you get more energy because of the dopamine hit, meaning like, yes, I did it. I got something done, which is exactly what you wanted in that situation. So you get that dopamine hit and it allows you to go forward. So that's what I learned, but let me talk about how I think it's relevant to you because my listeners are probably different than the listeners that do the Huberman thing and whoever is in Dr. Bassettis' class at NYU, probably not listening to this podcast here, watching these videos. And so I want to talk about how it relates to you. So if you just focus on your goals, whether that is making more money or having a better body or repairing broken relationships, if you just focus on that goal, and there's a long way to travel between where you are today and where you want to be. So for example, let's say you make $100,000 a year right now and you want to figure out how to make a million dollars a year. You can certainly do it. People do that all the time. There was a time when I had to figure that out. But what happens with it is, is that if you just focus on that goal, you are screwed. Like even a mid-range goal, like a 90-day goal, like a 90-day thing where you're trying to figure out, that's even too wide of a focus. Because think about the, um, the number of things that can go wrong even in 90 days. There's a lot to manage. And when you think about the weight of that and how psychologically that brings you down, causes poor performance or causes you to give up, that makes it more difficult to think about. So even 90 days, you've got to shrink down and you've got to shrink down your focus to even shorter timelines and smaller targets because those things are easy. You've heard me say before that anything hard is just a series of easy things. And that's exactly the principle that we're talking about here, obviously in the scientific sense. But really, if 90 day targets are too long, 90 day targets, if those are too long, really, what's the what's the answer? which has got to be the question in your mind. What I've found over my course of doing this is that weekly targets are typically small enough targets for me to look at to where they'll be challenging enough to get me excited about them, but they won't be so heavy that I won't do anything. And this is what I coach my clients to do as well. And it's a system that simply works. Right? And now I understand exactly the science behind why it works. I never knew that. I just knew that it had worked for me. And then I started showing it to other people and it started working for them as well. Obviously, there's specific protocols and ways that we go about setting these things up when it comes to our weekly games. But that is that is certainly what works. So it's close enough for you to see, right? If we talk about seeing the next quote unquote, mini finish line, the sign, the pair of shorts. It's close enough for you to see in a week and it's all actionable. It's stuff that you can do and you can focus on right then and right there. So then the question becomes, if you are looking at this on a weekly basis, you've shrunken your focus down from your long range goal down into a weekly thing that says, this is what has to happen this week in order for me to accomplish that thing way out in the future. If you've done that, but you're still not hitting what you said you wanted to do. You're not hitting any of your goals. You're not seeing the sign. You're not seeing the shorts. Like you're not getting there. Then you've got to revise it to be even smaller and less weighty and start playing a daily game where you start asking yourself the question, what needs to happen for me today in order for me to get closer to what I'm trying to achieve? What is that shortest timeline that I can think of, the simplest possible task that I can think of that's going to be in the direction of my ultimate finish line? And that's exactly where you need to go. So recognize that this is a very long race that you're playing. And we're talking about the race and game of life in general. And wherever you're trying to go, whatever you're trying to achieve, discipline is obviously the backbone. That's the vehicle that's going to get you there. This is more of a tactical understanding of how to frame yourself to psychologically keep going. 
Don't look at the very far finish line. Look at the finish lines that are closer. Create imaginary ones that are based on real life events, like the sign, like the pair of shorts. Whatever that is for you, that's what to create. And when you create that, the weight of it is going to be less. You're going to move forward further. You're going to be moving forward faster and you're going to be doing it more consistently. So this is something to start right away. This isn't something to start next week. Why not just start right now? Don't even start tomorrow. Because if you say tomorrow, then tomorrow is gonna turn into tomorrow again, and then tomorrow and tomorrow, and eventually tomorrow never comes. So start something like this right now. What's the simplest thing you could do today that's going to be your, quote, finish line for the day? Start working on this now, and I promise you, you're gonna have an entirely different life, entirely different business, different body, different relationships inside of the next 90 days to a year. I promise you that. And of course, before you go, I need to make sure that you don't just keep this information for yourself. Don't be selfish. If you know somebody in the real world that needs to hear the message that I shared today, please share this show with them. Hit the copy link, share the episode, text it to them. They'll be able to watch it right away. All right, guys. Thanks for showing up on this video. I'll see you in the next one.